CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. service director for the town of Arlington. Um, as we gather to celebrate the service of our veterans, living and deceased, please rise as you are able as the Boston Skyline Chorus presents our national anthem. <laughs>
As we prepare to reflect on the service and sacrifice made throughout our history in defense of our nation, conceived in liberty, dedicated to equality, with government of the people, by the people, and for the people, we welcome Father Mark Bishop, pastor of the Catholic parishes of Arlington, and a United States Navy veteran to offer an invocation. Today we honor our veterans, worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country. We pray that you will bless them, dear God, for their unselfish service and the continual struggle to persevere, to preserve our freedoms, our safety, and our country's heritage for all of us. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, the sacrifices they made, for the many different contrib contributions to America's victories over tyranny and oppression. We respect them, we thank them, we honor them, we are proud of them. We pray that you, dear God, will watch over these special people and bless them with peace and happiness. Amen. Amen. In 1918, at the 11th hour of the 11th day, in the 11th month, more than four years after World War II started, after 15 to 23 million military and civilian people died, and about as many were wounded, the nations at war stopped fighting. In accordance with the terms of the armistice, that their representatives had signed at 5.45 that morning. After the war, this day became known around the world as Armistice Day, to remember the fall. In 1954, the United States, which commemorates Memorial Day in May, renamed November 11th Veterans Day to honor all United States veteran, veterans who ever served in the military. Fire Chief Kevin Kelly, a United States Air Force veteran will toll Arlington's fire bell 11 times, recalling the origins of this day and honoring all those who ever served in the United States Armed Forces. After Chief Kelly tolls the bell, the Boston Skyline Chorus will present Let Freedom Ring.
at this time, we welcome John Fitzpatrick, a member of the Allington Veterans Council, to read the Governor's Veterans Day Proclamation. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us here today. Um, the first official uh, proclamation of Veterans Day was issued by then President Woodward Wilson on November 11, 1919, in celebration, as Colonel McGovern made reference to, of uh, the Armistice Day the year before, 1919, uh, at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. Um, in the proclamation, uh, President Wilson said at that time that it would be a time for quiet reflection and pride in the heroism of those who uh, died in their country's service. Uh, if you want to get a sense of the challenges faced by those soldiers long ago um, and by our soldiers today when they have to do battle, uh, you can go to a website if you're on the internet and have an extra internet few seconds. You can go on the website of the Imperial War Museum and there they uncovered a record of the audio recording of the last minute of World War I before the guns went silent. And it, is, it will leave an impression. It is just an amazing, amazing historical artifact to listen to. Again, available online whenever anybody uh, may have a moment or uh, the uh, inclination. The Imperial War Museum would be the one in London, England, of course. And reading from the governor for today's observance, a proclamation, whereas since the Commonwealth's earliest days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas on November 11th, 1918, after four years of conflict, the armistice was signed in the forest of Compagnie by the Allied Nations in Germany, ending World War I, the war to end all wars. And whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans, and whereas in November 2024, the world will commemorate the 106th anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. And whereas there are approximately 300,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas in recognition of the sacrifices made by those who have served our great nation, Massachusetts remains committed to supporting its veteran community through the HERO Act, honoring, standing for, honoring, empowering, and recognizing our service members and veterans. And whereas today we are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who have served their country so that their dedication and sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Maura T. Healy, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11th, 2024, to be Veterans Day, and urge all residents of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this 11th day of November in the year 2024 and of the independence of the United States of America, the 248th by Her Excellency Maura T. Healy, Governor of our Commonwealth.
We are honored to be joined today by Arlington's public officials, each of whom has been very supportive of our veterans community, and welcome them to offer brief remarks on the occasion of Veterans Day, starting with Arlington Select Board Chair, Stephen DeCorsi. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of my fellow board members, John Hurd, Len Diggins, and Eric Helmuth, it is our honor to be part of this morning's ceremony. I'd like to thank Colonel McGovern for his service to our country and for the work he does throughout the year as the town's Veterans Service Director. I also want to recognize the members of our Veterans Council. For those veterans who are here with us today, thank you for your service. You know, there's a number of Arlington police officers who are in the rear who are veterans. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for all veterans for being here today. I also want to acknowledge two of our firefighters, P.J. Hauser and Andrew Nato, who are currently deployed in our armed services. We gather today to recognize our veterans and to express our thanks to all who have served our country in the armed services so that we may enjoy the freedoms that we hold so dear. Through their service, they have demonstrated courage that provides an example to current and future generations. As Colonel McGovern said, Veterans Day was first celebrated in 1919. Then known as Armistice Day, November 11, 1919 was a one-year anniversary of the ceasefire that ended World War I. I want to take a moment to share the thoughts of a 22-year-old soldier serving in France in 1918 when World War I ended. I have in my hand a letter Army Private James Lawless wrote to his mother on November 5th, 1918, less than a week before the armistice was announced. The following excerpt, which begins with Private Lawless writing that he had just learned that one of his close friends had, from home had died in combat, a fact of his mother would already be aware, ex expresses the great sacrifices that those serving in the war made the sacrifices that families of soldiers made during the war, the goal of those soldiers writing home to reassure their family members of their well-being, the pride that each took in fighting for their country, and the recognition that, thankfully, the war was winding down. Here's the excerpt. I received a letter from Elizabeth tonight in which I learned of the death of George McKeon, killed in action in July. This is one more case, like Danny Gillen's, and is sure a sad one. He is another one of our boys that has done his bit to make a safe place for the dear ones we all have at home. The biggest part of the terrible war is over, and I believe it won't be a long time before we will be on our way back to our dear ones. Through my few hardships, I have kept surprisingly well. The prayers of my loved ones at home must have been answered. And I trust that mine for you at home, that must stand so much sorrow and hardships, have been answered. Private Lawless then closes his letter as follows. I wear a service stripe now, Mom, and feel proud as a general. If I get another one before I leave France, I'll feel all the prouder. Well, Mother, remember me to all and give my best regards. I am as ever your loving son, James. Private Lawless came home to Boston in June 1919, some seven months after Armistice Day. He lived until age 76, leaving his wife Mabel, three daughters, and 17 grandchildren, one of whom was my wife, Mary. <laughs> the dozens of letters he sent home for the war provide vivid examples of the sacrifices that he and other servicemen and women have made for our country. There are more than 18 million veterans living in the United States, approximately 300,000 here in Massachusetts, and thousands in Arlington. Each veteran has demonstrated a commitment for which we are forever grateful. While we take time each November 11th to recognize and honor veterans, we must also strive to keep our veterans in our hearts and minds throughout the year and never forget 
what they have given us. Thank you, Reverend. At this time, Chair DeCorsi will be followed by Town Manager Jim Feeney. Interception of Mass Ave, Broadway, and Medford Street, where in five months of battle reenactment will march past this very location. I mention this because this reenactment event will mark one of the first major military engagements of the American Revolution. And as this semi quincentennial anniversary approaches, we should be reminded that Arlington holds an important place in the fight for independence but was also home to some of the nation's very first veterans. And ever since securing our national freedom, generations of Arlingtonians have continuously dedicated themselves to the defense of that same enduring freedom. We remember and honor scores of women and men who served their country at the Memorial Park outside this fire headquarters. It's worth noting that veterans come from all walks of life, and this certainly holds true for the town of Arlington as an employer. From Charlie P., the second shift custodian at Arlington High School, to uh, Pat L., the network manager in the IT department, we have veterans scattered across the organization. But there are certainly many veterans concentrated in the ranks of the Arlington Police and Fire Departments. Uh, there are eight veterans on the police department currently and some uh, 20 veterans in the Arlington Fire Department, a number of whom, as was mentioned, are gathered here today in the rear. It is necessary to single you folks out. That is because you completed your military service and you took off one uniform, but you didn't stop there. You donned yet another uniform and committed yourselves to a career in civil service. So you are public servants in the truest sense of the word and for that, I am grateful. So to these individuals, and to all veterans gathered here today, and for those that are not joining us today, I offer a sincere thank you for your service from the town of Arlington, and thank you again for everyone for joining today. Appreciate it. Senator Cindy Friedman to follow uh, Town Manager Feeney. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Um, I want to especially thank Phil. Um, you know, the legislature and the Senate are the members of communities, and so you don't always you don't always know what's going on and what's happening, and Phil is just incredible at uh, keeping us abreast of what's going on and what's needed and what's happening in Arlington. So you are incredibly well served, we are incredibly well served, and I think we should do it around the world. So to be honest, I actually brought with me the wrong speech. So, um, in that vein, I just want to reiterate what Jim has said. I want to thank all of the veterans on our police and fire. Um, I want to acknowledge all the children here. And how many of you know what a veteran is? Raise your hand. Pretty good, you've been well schooled, right? So a veteran is somebody that has worked, has, has fought for our country in a war to protect our interests, to protect our values, and to protect our Constitution. And that's why it is so incredibly important that we acknowledge that work. The best way to acknowledge that is to serve veterans when they come home, to make sure that they have what they need to continue to be a successful 
um, contributing part of our society. Because war is really, really hard. War is tough. There's nothing glamorous about it. And when you go out there and you put your life on the line for us, we need to acknowledge that you have done this incredible service. So our job is to take care of you when you come home and make sure you have what you need when you need it. And that's why the HEROES Act that the legislature passed is so critical, because it provides things like veteran tax credits, higher credits for hiring veterans, making sure that veterans have access to mental health care when they need it, and the, to housing, um, to understanding what their benefits are. Those are really, really important, and that's the way that not only can we say thank you, but we can truly honor them and put our words and action, put our actions behind our words. So thank you all for being here. I am so proud of Arlington for the turnout, for how we treat veterans and everyone in this community. It is a real, real honor to represent you. Thank you. Now welcome uh, State Representative David Rogers to follow Senator Freeman. Well, good morning everyone and happy Veterans Day to all the veterans here. Thank you for your service. Um, as Senator Freeman said, one of the greatest ways we can recognize veterans is to honor them when they come back. And um, I think Massachusetts consistently ranks among the very highest of all the 50 states in terms of the benefits we provide our veterans. And I think every session I've been in the legislature, which is six so far, we passed a major piece of legislation with veterans benefits. And we need to keep doing that every session. Um, I just read an article the other day because of multiple deployments, many of our service members now are stretched pretty thin. It's hard on families. Um, and so, I'm also reminded that um, what holds this country together is working for a cause greater than yourself. Uh, all of us have our narrow self-interest, our own families, our own work. Um, but veterans step up for all of us because that's what holds the country together. Serving for a cause greater than just your own interest. And uh, begging your indulgence, I always think of my dad who fought in World War II and three of my uncles who fought in World War II. Um, and I'm also struck by how young they were. We asked folks who were 18, 19, 20 to go off and perform very dangerous missions. And um, for those of us not in the military, I don't think we can possibly fathom the kind of sacrifices they're asked to make. Um, I also want to know Representative Garbley uh, wanted to be here, but he's a featured speaker over in Medford. Uh, he's going to try to make it. Uh, but you wanted me to say Happy Veterans Day to everyone. And so again, to all the veterans, thank you for your service. Uh, thank you, of course, to Colonel McGovern. The weather has cooperated. The Boston Skyline Chorus was amazing. And it's a great way to honor and respect our veterans. So thank you very much. Thank you very much to each of our uh, public officials, uh, elected and appointed leadership of our community. Uh, it's very important in, in our civic offense um, that we have such leaders who want to not only take the time out on Veterans Day and do, and think very carefully about what, the, what they want to say to us on Veterans Day, but that also uh, support veterans uh, throughout the year in, in their work. Now, uh, echoing what, was, what Senator Friedman said a few minutes ago about uh, youth participation, uh, extremely robust youth participation in our commemorations of Veterans Day. At this time, I'd like to invite uh, Pam Rose and Maddie Jesta, two students from Arlington Catholic High School, 
who are going to read letters uh, that they uh, and their classmates wrote uh, to be shared with veterans. Um, I have those letters, as well as letters from uh, elementary school students at the Bracken School here, <laughs> and we're going to distribute them uh, today to veterans who are here, uh, but also over the coming days and weeks uh, to veterans at different uh, veterans facilities, such as the Bedford VA Medical Center, uh, perhaps at the soldiers' homes, uh, depending upon you know, uh, we want to make sure all the letters get into the right hands. So as long as we've got letters, we're going to go find places to hand them out. Uh, so at this time, Cam and Maddie, uh, in whichever order you prefer. <laughs> Good morning and happy Veterans Day to all of you. We would like to introduce ourselves. I am Cam Rose and she is Maddie Giesta. We are only two of the many 11th grade students of Arlington Catholic High School who wrote letters of gratitude to the veterans of the town of Arlington. We are here to read to you two of the letters. We hope you like them. Thank you for your sacrifice and service to our country and to the world. This is a letter from our classmate, Leah. Every morning, we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance with our hand over our heart. Before baseball games or sporting events, the national anthem is sung, and the very last line stands out to me, over the land of the free and the home of the brave. I'm able to play with my little brother in our backyard with no worry about what's for dinner. I go to school, laugh with my friends, celebrate my community, only thanks to the sacrifices you have made. Because of your bravery and dedication, we're able to live peacefully. Because of your strength, children and our young generations are able to laugh and play, knowing close to no fear. And for that, we thank you for your service. We celebrate and love you for all you have done and sacrificed. From John 15, verses 12 and 13, I quote, my command is this love, oh sorry. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Thank you for everything. We're eternally grateful. God loves you and recognizes your sacrifice. I pray for your safety and happiness. First and foremost, happy Veterans Day. It's truly inspiring that you were able to commit to such a hard decision and were willing to serve. I have siblings that are currently serving, and that feeling of maybe not seeing them again is heartbreaking. The hardships you face is unimaginable to me, and the wounds you've suffered, physical or mental, is also something I don't think I could ever comprehend. One of my favorite verses in the Bible talks about wearing the armor of God, and though you have retired your old armor, I hope that you continue to wear the armor of love. I would love if you wrote back and shared your story. I hope that you have a joyous future and that God blesses you and your family. Keep on fighting, soldier. Thank you. This time, I'd invite the Allen of the uh, Boston Skyline Chorus to present the climb, which has been described as a powerful ballad with lyrics that describe life as a difficult but rewarding journey.
as a uh, veteran of the 10th Mountain Division, I certainly can share that I very much appreciate the mountain theme, uh, <laughs> the climbing theme. Our uh, motto is climb the glory, and the response is to the top, despite the hardships. So thank you very much for sharing that. As we prepare to close our gathering, uh, we welcome Father Mark back to offer a benediction. Lord God, creator of humanity and author of peace, gathered here we are ever mindful of the cost paid for the liberty we possess. We ask you to bless the members of our armed forces past and present. Give them courage, hope, and strength. May they ever experience your firm support, gentle love, and compassionate healing. Be their power and protector, leading them from darkness to light. To you be all glory, honor, and praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. At this time, I'd like to share um, a well-known and beloved poem um, that reflects uh, on this day and its heartfelt global dimensions. Uh, one of our audience, um, is, an Arlingtonian, is here and he brought it with him. Um, he's here honoring America's veterans, but drew to my attention that his family has a long uh, military tradition of service in his home country, the United Kingdom, uh, for many decades now, since the time of World War I, the greatest ally in the history of the United States, uh, and the, our former colonial power, which goes to show how peaceful relations, relationships can emerge from strife and warfare and how much more of that we need um, and, and hope to have. And it's the poem he asked me to share on his, the sacrifice of all who fought in World War I. It's called In Flanders Fields by Jay. In Flanders Fields the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you, from falling hands, we throw this torch. Be, your, be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. And I thank you for sharing that with us. It speaks to the universality of this very human condition of warfare and reinforces to, a, to us the imperative to continually stand for our ideals, to stand for liberty and democracy, to stand for those things Abraham Lincoln spoke of. Liberty, equality, government of the people, by the people, for the people. while also seeing ways to get to that globally without destroying ourselves. Now, on a lighter note, uh, I also want to echo the, the thanks that were given from this podium repeatedly for the past half an hour. Um, 
so gratifying to see Allington turn out this way. We had a, a good crowd last year, and we have like double other today. Um, I'm just so impressed, as I have been, uh, for the past year in doing my duties here as the veteran service officer, um, of how many veterans we have who've given so much, and not only veterans. Veterans Day is not only for veterans. It's for veterans' families as much. And in my work, I've seen how the wounds of war penetrate families, bring families to destruction, and how some struggle to hold themselves together and maintain their love despite the real hardship that's been created by the, the terrors that their veteran family member saw in war, or just through service, not only in war. Those who never served in combat can also bear the strains and wounds, visible and invisible, of military service. They are no less veterans than those who suffered in, in warfare. So it would not be a uh, military-themed gathering unless uh, we had a few administrative notes uh, before closing the ceremony. And the first among those things is to sp pay special thanks. It's printed in the program, but I know, we, and I apologize that we didn't have enough programming for the, um, the huge crowd. Um, so I'll read them. We give special thanks, starting with those who marched here uh, in the procession, which was led by the Veterans Color Guard of the American Legion Post 39 and Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 1775. Uh, uh, each of those, the Legion, um, with the leadership of my predecessor, two predecessors ago, Bill McCarthy and the VFW under the leadership of Michael Ogden. We thank the Arlington Fire Department, Honor Guard, the Arlington Police Department, Honor Guard. Enormous thanks to the, uh, the different scouting organizations um, of Arlington for their enthusiastic participation. They were here last year, and they've quadrupled their numbers this year in participating. We thank the Monotomy Minutemen, who, like their predecessors from over 200 years ago, 1775, colonial days, are always ready and always respond, and they bring what they can and what they have available. Um, and it's their spirit which they carry forward, reminding us of the origins of American freedom that we value so much, and we were so grateful for your always being here. We thank the students of Arlington Catholic High School and the Brackett Elementary School for being here. In addition, uh, we thank Reynolds Mott, the bugler, who's joining us today, and we'll run to taps outside as we get regather out in, in front of the fire station uh, to lay a wreath on the Veterans Monument. For the town of Arlington for support, we thank the Arlington Veterans Council, the staff of the, the Fire Department headquarters who work here and have picked up every odd job there was to pull this off from arranging the chairs, um, passing out the programs, making sure that this place was a warm and welcoming spot for us to have this uh, celebration of veteran service. We also thank the police department traffic unit for getting us all here safely. It's only a quarter mile, but Mass Ave is no joke. And so we're happy that we were all here safely, uh, of all ages, and I have to certainly give that, you know, special thanks, without naming any names, you know, to folks who served a very long time ago, got on their feet and walked down from, from, um, from Walgreens to the fire station. It shows just how committed they are to honoring uh, their fellow veteran service and to honoring our country. And finally, 
thank the veterans, the, the Boston Skyline courses, uh, Chorus for their beautiful music, um, and, and right on key, with uh, <laughs> right on key both musically and uh, lyrically uh, to the spirit of the day. Most of all, thank you to our veterans for your quiet courage, the exemplary uh, service, your embodiment of service above self, may be all lived by your example, which brings to mind the quote written on the front. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. President John F. Kennedy, in his 1963 Thanksgiving proclamation, which was issued before his death, just a few days before Thanksgiving. Following the ceremony, all are invited to go outside for a brief wreath-laying ceremony at the Veterans Monument, directly in front of the fire station, out through that front door where the exit sign is. After the wreath lane, all were invited back into the fire station to enjoy coffee from Dunkin' Donuts and donuts from Gail Ann's. <laughs> and uh, certainly, uh, last but not least, to enjoy good camaraderie with each other. This is a day when the community speaks most and speaks loudest and speaks with heartfelt appreciation for the service of veterans and for the families of service members with great gratitude for what they've done for our country and our community. Um, I'd also draw your attention as an admin note to the back of the program. Um, please don't neglect it. Uh, we have a special announcement for 2025. I'm not going to read the whole thing, uh, but the veteran, the Arlington Veterans Oral History Project, which uh, my office and the Veterans Council launched about eight months ago, first discussed the idea about 10 or 11 months ago. Uh, it produced, you can get it, this QR code, yeah. a eight interview documentary, highly professional, well-polished piece, uh, chronicling the stories of service of eight of our veterans, seven veterans are interviewed, and one family member. I highly recommend it, and to especially if you're a veteran or a family member, pay attention to the part, the last line, of this, um, uh, this narrative that asks you to, well, Bill, you want to stand up and just so they know who they're going to be emailing, to email Bill Hayner on the Veterans Council, who's been coordinating this effort, um, to be interviewed, if, if you want, or just to learn more about it. Um, because not everybody's got the same comfort level of sitting down in front of a camera, even if it's, if it's you know, no matter how comfortably it's designed. It might take some getting used to and thought ahead of time. Um, so we're not pushing anybody into anything, uh, pressurizing anybody, but we do want to familiarize people with the great value that comes from this effort in helping veterans, while they're still with us, we're all, we've all got an expiration date, sadly, uh, that can create a record of, of service that people in our community have done uh, and that will build for the future uh, so that you know, the memories of military service will remain living memories after we're gone, and the generations ahead can continue to learn from veterans' stories and their family stories. Uh, with that, I turn it back to the Boston Skyline Chorus, who will close our gathering with a rendition of America the Beautiful.
being here. Appreciate the turnout. This is Arlington's Veterans Monument. Not the first Veterans Monument in Arlington. The uh, Abuesk at the opposite end of this Veterans Memorial Park was dedicated after the Civil War in the 1870s. This one was dedicated, I believe, between the two world wars. So sometime after 1918, and I believe before 1940. As many of you know, the town for several years has been doing plans to uh, revitalize this Veterans Memorial Park with a this Veterans Monument remaining, with the Civil War Monument remaining, and with the Veterans Honor Roll being replaced with an Honor Roll that will be more permanent and will help to create a space that'll be contemplative, balanced, and integrated into the community. A place where people can come, veterans, veterans' families, civilian members of the community who have never served, but want to be here to be reminded of and to honor the veterans whose names will be inscribed on, that, on the, that honor roll. So with that, our tradition in Arlington is to close the Veterans Day events by laying a wreath on this monument to all of Arlington's veterans through its whole history. I asked Michael Ogna, who, as I mentioned earlier, has served as the commander of the VFW. His service was in the Navy, in combat, as a swift boat commander in Vietnam. Mike, I'd ask that you place the wreath on the monument. Ceremony. And thank you for being here. Please join us inside for coffee donuts and some camaraderie with, uh, with the community members. Thanks again. <laughs> ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.